right, let's go back to the um, outlook purposes over here. So here's our five area. One thing that I like to do once we've established the pattern just from observations is to kind of shift over to um, numerical model guidance and kind of get a general overview um, looking at um, some of the latest uh, Euro output just to get in terms of large-scale mass field evolution. Um, you can see evolu uh, the reflection of the circulation of the mid-levels associated, associated with Harvey moving inland um, and then really stalling and meandering as we head through the uh, Saturday period um, embedded within um, the uh, broader area of westerly flow aloft, embedded speed maxima. You can see one disturbance that could be convectively enhanced in the day one period, moves across the upper Mississippi Valley region in the day two period. That will probably be associated with some flux of higher theta E air out to the east, maybe a warm advection zone um, that becomes established. Um, over whatever cold pool is left behind from the day one period, since we do have slight risk problems for the day one period. It's important that we think about all these things in terms of how what happens on day one is going to impact day two. At least loosely organized system with severe risk on the day one period, um, perhaps augment the mid-level vorticity field sufficiently uh, to support some maybe MCV features with the Euros picking up on perhaps. Maybe it's some amplification of the background disturbance. It's small amplitude, but at least, at least some deepening of that particular features in this east, it'll become removed from the better buoyancy related to this moisture plume to the north. But there could still be a leftover outflow boundary left behind by that system um, that could focus development of, of convection without particularly strong height rises in the um, middle Missouri Valley region here on day two. And then looking back to the northwest, we have northwest flow regime, no substantial frontal intrusion, um, throughout much of this area, but at least some frontal intrusion probably um, occurring through here. Kind of getting mass field perspective, we have the day one convective issues here um, that we see with the QPF fields from the Euro, um, enhanced diurnally, um, east of the lead trough and near that quasi-stationary boundary that we have analyzed there while it becomes diffuse with time. There'll probably be outflow left over, probably some outflow boundary from northern Iowa through northeast Nebraska into South Dakota, um, depicted early in the period. That'll probably intersect a weak front, as indicated by the Eurogan. It's very weak, maybe prefrontal trough, perhaps. As you can see, we have probably at 21.0Z, we'll have that weekly baroclinic trough, um, perhaps convectively augmented in some areas across the middle Missouri Valley. It's not a strong front because we still have maintained a recycled moisture plume there. Maybe there will be a, a weak frontal wave with a warm front through parts of Iowa. That front will then become increasingly diffuse as it extends to northeast Colorado. Probably be a focus for some storm development over here. Kind of tracking back, yeah, it looks pretty much like whatever disturbance is going to be linked to this weekly baroclinic trough here through eastern Montana that will come to the southeast. Probably some convective enhancement is at least what we're seeing in the year. I want to look at some other model guidance soon. That will probably be a you know, focus with different focus for additional storm development along that boundary, differential heating zones, um, boundary intersection from whatever outflow boundary um, can get going. It's not the most organized scenario at all, and that's why we're not dealing with particularly high probabilities for either day one or day two. And then we're going to have to look back up to the north in this recycled moisture corridor up to another weak front, no strong frontal intrusion, just weak bare clinic troughs moving through. Um, for additional development into North Dakota vicinity um, and then along the lead trough over the high plains. I'm going to use background MUK QPF fields just kind of sketch out what the latest, you know, my guess of what the latest might want to consider in terms of updates from what I'm seeing here. i um, bring up the uh, last day two outlook over here. Pull up our low level mass fields over here. And one thing I am noticing over here is that at least the Euro is depicting an appreciable amount of MU Cape in the recycled moisture plume into North Dakota with that secondary baroclinic boundary. You know, even some evidence of northeastward protrusions from per perturbations moving through the flow aloft into the north central U.S. I'm going to want to consider bringing this marginal all the way up through North Dakota, something like this, to kind of reflect the idea of having um, some corridor of lee troughing enhanced moisture return all the way into North Dakota. 
And then kind of looking at some of the reflection of surface boundaries through parts of Iowa into southern Minnesota, looks like there's probably some indication of weak, at least weak to moderate prefrontal buoyancy with enhanced mid-level flow aloft all the way um, up to southern Minnesota with the passage of this disturbance. There's a lot of uncertainty, but we're going to at least defer to that possibility um, in, the, in the outlook um, by bringing this extension north. Also, I'm noticing that pretty much within a um, prefrontal convergence band here through northern Kansas, it's going to get hot with westerly flow coming off the uh, higher terrain, some convergence axis. It looks like it'll probably materialize based on these mass fields into Kansas east of the lead trough. That'll probably be a focus zone for additional storm development through northern Kansas, perhaps as far east as parts of Topeka CWA um, as we go into the day two period. And if we get some storm clusters get going in that regime, certainly could produce some uh, locally damaging wind gusts. And so we're going to reflect that steep mid-level lapse rates enhancing um, the decay. So we'll kind of indicate more of an, uh, something looking like an oven mitt, perhaps, for our outlook area. And I'm going to get rid of a couple vertices here just to not imply too much rigidity in the lead trough. There'll be individual service surges in terms of where that sets up. But something a bit expanded like this, and I'll send a chat out soon to those offices just mentioning that. And then with Harvey, here we have our five area. This is going to account for both tornado threat and wind threat. Now, granted, typically, you know, slight risk is going to come with 15 props, but we also know that we have tornado risk being the main threat with these tropical systems in many circumstances. And so what we'll do is say that the 5% area, the bounds, indicate both combined severe wind and tornado risk. So kind of with that in mind, um, we're going to pull up latest GFS over here. We're going to be focusing on the north, central, and central U.S. first. Looks like there's at least some, based on the, the pattern and reflectivity, some evidence of a frontal wave of sorts through parts of north, central Iowa, um, perhaps near the intersection of whatever outflow boundary, and that perhaps convectively augmented uh, baroclinic trough here. Could be some non-zero tornado risk. The, Deep shear is a little bit minimal. Effective shear is 25 knots or so, so it's kind of on the marginal side. There are steep lapse rates coming in, for sure. I'm just not exactly sure where the outflow boundary is going to lay out, but this area in western Iowa looks pretty interesting. And then you can see evidence of some of the high plains activity evolving within that recycled moisture corridor, which will capture um, recycled moisture corridor and then up to this front and in a prefrontal trough and those clusters kind of coming south with time. And we'll just begin to sneak it into uh, parts of Topeka's area, um, into uh, Kansas City's area as well. So we'll go into Pleasant Hills CWA. Couldn't rule out some need for a slight western Iowa. 